All right. So well, we this have... has been a fantastic interview. I just want to thank yes. you very much for having me, and I'll talk to you next time. I, I think you've been my best guest so far. So we have it's the a, most. It's, it's a rugged charm. Yes, as you can tell, we have the most serious man in all of music here. Would you consider yourself a traditionalist, Jason? A purist. Okay. Yeah, he he likes things, you know, throwback to how they should be in the good old days. He's one of the get off my lawn. I like guys, to throw. Right? I like to throw them back. I like to throw them back to how they shouldn't be. Yes. And you're doing a terrific job, I might add. Thank you. So I got to say, uh, congrats. You sold out another Soto Beeler show. You were a little bit worried about finding a lone wolf concert goer, as you put it, for Nashville. But you did find one. So did, did you think that when you and yes, Jeff started, did. like, these shenanigan-filled evenings, whatever the hell you want to call them, that you'd be selling them out, like, fairly consistently? Um. We never really thought about it. I mean, you know, the, the idea was just to go someplace uh, uh, that we both felt like going to and, and you know, have fun and have some drinks. And uh, with that lack of planning, it seems to have taken on a life of its own, which is kind of a good thing. Yeah. So how would you best, because you have another show coming up February 17th in Orlando. If anybody hasn't been to a uh -huh. Soto Beeler show, how would you, in your words, describe it? Because it's tough. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, kind of a throwback to like a, you know, a, 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 a almost a cabaret style, vaudeville style, Rat Pack style evening. Uh, but, you know, there's no rules. So there's nothing we won't play. There's nothing we won't do. There's no story we won't tell. Um, you know, it, it's just chaos. And And you can give them drinks and get them as drunk as you want. And then you can hear whatever story that you want. That you, you guys allow the fans to bring you whatever they want. And I'm sure you appreciate it as well. Never never want to turn down a beverage from a, a, a loyal a supporter. Yes. So now we got to talk. New Single Heathens has just been released. So go listen to it wherever you stream your music. Apple Music, Spotify. That's all I can think of. Pandora, it's on there. What other streaming services are around? iHeartRadio. You on that? All of them. So, uh, Tidal. Tidal. Uh, Deezer. Uh, Amazon Music, uh, yeah. So yes. all of them, whatever, whatever your preference is. I think we've served you. So the way you're doing it, it's like it's the Heathens EP, and it also has Sick Riff, Numb, Flying Monkeys, Human Head, and Bear Sedatives on it. How? What was the thought process? Because the last release was the Bear Sedatives EP, which is obviously all of those songs minus Heathens, because that would be weird if you also put it on there. But uh, what was the thought process behind doing that? Just releasing them all like in a big group to kind of keep them together. Um, we've been kind of just one at a time. So we did the first single, uh, which I don't even know which one it would be right now. Maybe it was Sick Riff or, and then the next time, about a month later, we released two songs and Sick Riff was on that. And then we kind of, yeah. I think the kids call it a waterfall. Um, yes. But um, I think because the way people digest music, you know, there's two different fan bases. One uh, I'm very lucky that there's a group of people who listen to every nuance of every detail and will sit with headphones on for hours and comment about, you know, this uh, ambient panning reverb on this certain song. And then there's another group of people who are passively listening. Um, and also we live in a time that I think people's attention spans, like it, it almost seems like once the record comes out, it's over. Yeah. Like the the whole, so this is a kind of way to kind of get people hearing the music. Also, it's it's a big, dense record. The record has fifteen songs on it. Yeah. Um. So it you know it's it's a good it's a good hour and ten minutes of music. Um. So I figured getting the music into people's hands so they can start to digest some of it for people who want to listen like that can kind of get familiar with it, and then the full record will come out. And there's no plan, man. I'm just rolling it. Whatever happens, I just kind of so, so far I make music. Working. That, that Seems to be working. Job. I have no idea why, but I'm I, I'm not questioning it. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't if I was in your position. I'd definitely just, all right, I'll, I'll roll with this. So how many more singles are you planning on releasing? Are you just going to wait? Because the album is now available for pre-order. Are you just going to let the other, if my math is right, nine songs just be unveiled when people buy the album? See, college is paying off. I knew it, it was. It is. I'm doing uh, amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah, the next the next record the full record's gonna come out April 14th. Yes. Um and then uh so we might do something prior to that, might do a bonus track, might just roll with it depending. Um 
uh, so we're kind of coming to the end of the singles portion of it, and the full record will kind of be the next probably big step. And so you have it's available pre order now. Is there still vinyl available if anybody wants to order vinyl still? Not many. I mean, I'm Not really pl pleasantly surprised uh, and thankful that people have supported it that much. We wanted to do something kind of special for like the people, you know, the band camp community that's been so unbelievably in tune with what I've done and supported me the whole time. So I wanted to make sure that they got this specific kind of red double vinyl. And then yeah. when the record, when the vinyl comes to stores, there'll be a different color for like independent retail, like, you, you know, Amoeba and all your indie retailers will get like a, like yeah. a yellow vinyl. And then eventually it'll go to black, none more black. Just like your soul, right, Jason? Exactly. Just so, like the depths of my soul. So talk a little bit about Bandcamp, because more people really should be on it. It's definitely like a good service to use. Talk a little bit about why you like using it. I mean, I've been with them since they started. I mean, initially this whole solo stuff started as a, uh, I wanted to write uh, a writing experiment. So my basic premise was I was I hated labels, I hated managers, I hated radio, I hated press. I was getting wrapped up into all this stuff and it was never focusing on the music. So I figured I would just write, record, release a song in like 24 hours. It was a limitation I put on myself just to get better at writing. That was my whole thought process. And, you know, having that ability to put it out uh, on Bandcamp kind of made it like a finished thing so i could throw it up there and i wound up doing like 150 songs over the period of a bit of time and, and it, it took on a life of its own and became this kind of great service but they're they're super artist friendly they uh they even do these things like band camp fridays where they don't charge the artist any fees to do the music so like once a month they'll 100 percent of the proceeds will go to the artist um yeah it's definitely the most fan-centered uh you know, service, I think yeah. for music. And I, I can't speak highly enough about it. I mean, but I'm not precious. I mean, there's people who are like, like, Hey man, if however you get your music and it makes you happy, that's great. Yeah. So, uh, is there a possibility now? Cause I, normally the next step after like an album is touring. I touring is very tough now. It's not, it doesn't seem like fun, but is there a possibility for a couple like full band shows with the rest of the Baron Von Bielski orchestra? Yeah. Well, last year we did, we headlined uh, one of the days at Prague power fest yeah. or one of the, you know, which was great this year. We're definitely looking at doing it. I mean, my thing with this particular album for anybody who's listened to it kind of gets the vibe, but, uh, you know, I want it to be a full production and the right thing. It's not the kind of record that I want to be thrown up in front of another band and have five minutes to sound check. It's just, it's got to be done right and visually right. Yeah. To to have to, to have the impact. So we're just really picking and choosing what, what where, and how it makes sense. You know, I mean, uh, that's my only concern is I just want to bring it to life the right way. Yeah. Um, which... Not from an ego, not from an ego standpoint. I don't mind playing small venues, uh, anything like that. I just want it to be a contained, uh, you know, I want it to be an extension of what the record is. And yeah. And so the record is Postcards from the Asylum. You've kind of taken on like a life of your own now. I mean, the last one with the apocalypse imagery and everything. How did all that start to come about? Has that always been in your head or are you just like doing whatever the hell you want now? Just throwing stuff at the wall. I, I'm really lucky to work with a genius artist named Robert Merrick, who, uh, for the first time in my creative experience, like kind of marries what I do sonically to imagery that I think feels exactly like what I would do if I could do it. I'm a, not a great artist, so I can't really create what he does. And it just feels like an extension. You know, I, I mean, it sounds kind of, you know, overhyped to say, but it, it feels like a band member. Like it's a, he's he's like visually yeah. kind of creating the imagery that I feel goes with the record. So um, it's just developed from there. I mean, um and yeah, it's just, it's like, even this whole record, it's like, I, I made it very similar to the last record where I wrote it all myself and then was, you know, sending to my friends, whoever I was going to have guest on it. Um, but I didn't really listen back to it or realize the context of it being like a, like a concept album until I got it back from him and he did the art and I was like, oh, wow. It's like, it really does kind of have this weird, linear, loosely based uh, concept feel to it. Yeah. So are so you planning on it's, sticking it's a, with that? I don't stick with anything. I mean, I, I, really, I, you know, I have no, I don't have any dogma. I mean, to me, it's like, 
It's just, it's always coming from a place where I feel like creating this. Yeah. So if, if the next record feels like an extension of that and we go in that direction, um, then that's what we felt like, you know, I felt like doing. And, and, and if we, uh, and should it take on another, you know, should, should I want to become a, you know, like the next Beyonce, that's, that's what the next record will be. I mean, I just, I would love you? making music and, and I like to make, music. I could. I would love for, I would love for you to do this. I think we have to now. I just love music, man. So to me, it's like, it, it, as long as I feel it and it's something I'm interested in, I, I, I tend to go down those rabbit holes. I mean, from like the Soto Beeler shows, we can see, I mean, you wrote Watermelon Sugar and Levitating, obviously, but you're clearly right, in touch clearly. with like what the young kids want now. Is it, Why is that important to you to like kind of keep up with what's being played on the radio? It's really not um, okay. at all. Um I, I just do what I like. I mean, so, I mean, you know, it, it, with all due respect to anybody, I mean, I like Harry Styles, you know, I, I love Lizzo. I mean, that, that's all cool music to me. I, I like listening to music. So if I hear a cool tune, whether it's Miles Davis or Harry Styles or Beatles or anything I want to pull from, I don't, I don't buy into the genre thing or now or then. I think you only get this is, you know, when you get married to a genre or a time period, a lot of people, especially as they get older, you know, it's like, and I get that because, you know, music's there for your first kiss, your first graduation, your first breakup. Your, so those, uh, the impact of that music kind of sticks with you and has a really important embedded part of your life. Um, yeah. I, but for me, music's always been that way to me. So like, I've never, like, there is music I'll hear today. Like I just listened to the new Hammock record. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but I am not. Um, and, but I'm blown away. Like, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. You know, they, you know, I, I listen to new music as so much as I listen to old music and, and uh, not trying to stay current. I just dig music. So is there any new songs we're going to be see, seeing thrown into the Soto Beeler set soon? The, we've made some changes. All right. And, much and, to and, the chagrin and detriment of the show. I, I wouldn't say that. So you have the Monsters of Rock Cruise coming up now. You have two sets i'm assuming worth of fun that you can throw in so how is that now you can just add in are you adding in a lot of curveballs or are you just keeping that i mean a lot of the set is improv so we have, yeah. have a bed of stuff that we pick from but i mean a lot of it is depending on whatever strikes my fancy at the moment or jeff you know we trigger into something so there's every chance that we will get hammered and play two songs and talk for 45 minutes I'd there's every that. chance yeah and there's every chance we'll play 15 songs and talk for one minute. I mean, it really is. And it's become this cool thing. Cause I think the first time I did the monsters of rock cruise, um, a couple of years back, the crowd was kind of like, wait a minute, he's not wearing spandex. He's not jumping off the riser, singing about a hot chick in a fast car. Like, what is this guy doing? Like, yeah. what, how did this happen? And it's grown into this culture and community of like, okay, we get it now. And we're going because this is going to be nuts. And it's been fun to see, that kind of change of like, uh, you know, it's grown with those people, you know, and, yeah. and now it's like their family and they love it. And, you know, it's like they, they kind of want the chaos more than anything else. You know, um, and we've always had some amazing special guests and people that come up and play with us. And, um, you know, whether it's Ben Bumblefoot or Dino Jalusic or Joel Hoekstra or, you know, all our buds uh, this year, I think Pat from Extreme is going to play a song with us and, uh, you know, we Todd Kearns, Todd Dammit Kearns, uh, and Brent Fitz. And like, we have this really cool rotating uh, group of people that are always kind of buying into the uh, insanity of it now. So it's been, it's been just great. And so are you looking, how many other shows do we have scheduled? I saw the one for uh, Orlando. How many others are you looking to do this year on the road with Jeff? Um, well, on the road is a big word. We really just go Friday and Saturday. Yeah, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday to great cities with great food and great hotels. We um, don't have any of that. I'm sorry. Well, then we will probably not be there. But we love those people still. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's what we do. So the next chunk of shows we'll probably do is going to be May into June, and then we have September and October. Um, we'll do a bunch. Of, we just you know we we kind of fill in gaps between when Jeff's doing Trans Siberian Orchestra or Sons of Apollo or. Uh, the Soto stuff, like, and I'm not doing my solo stuff. Like we find these weekends where we want to go hang out and Jeff's been like, 
one of my best friends since I was 18 years old. So it's just literally like the most fun you can have. Have you thought about recording any of these shows and like making a live album with Soda? That would be kind of tough to title the tracks because there's going to be like one track that's 10 minutes of yelling at an audience member. But right. have you thought about doing that? No, um, it's a good question. And people have asked it. But to me, this lives best in the moment. Yeah. You know, I, 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 and, I, and I'm glad we can really pursue it that way. It's not yeah. a... You know, it's not best viewed on a YouTube phone camera. It's not best viewed, you know, or listened to on a on a record. It, it it's about a bunch of people, Jeff and I and the audience, having a great night together. Yeah, and that's kind of hard. It's one of the few things you can't really transfer over the internet well, or on a CD or a streaming service. So, our focus is just really continuing to expand that community that gets it. Yes, and we will make sure that that happens. Please go see them because you, I had no idea what to expect the first time, and it was, it was definitely an experience, I'll say that. Awesome. So that is all I have for you, sir. If there's anything else you want to talk about coming up, if, I don't know what plans you're keeping secret, what plans you're not keeping secret, but if you have anything else you'd like to talk about, please feel free. No, I mean, that, that basically covers it. New records, more shows with Jeff, a solo stuff coming up. Going, We're going to be heading to Europe at some point this year, uh, Jeff and I, uh, to do some stuff in Paris and England and uh, hopefully Scandinavia. And uh, other than that, man, just, you know, making music and being happy. I appreciate you taking the time, man, to of course. talk. Yes, thank you so much. Remember, go to jasonbeeler.bandcamp.com, get those red vinyls, because there will not be many like them. There's... 200 is it 250 there's 250 we made yeah so they're almost all gone over a weekend it's pretty i'm impressed yes you should be so make sure you go get those go see soto beeler uh buy them alcohol at the shows if you want the more alcohol the more fun i'm for somebody for somebody yeah probably for the person who's filming it and putting it online to get clicks exactly but thank you very much jason i appreciate your time thanks i appreciate it man